EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment. EIA is the base of sustainable development. Today, I would like to underline that the first ever issue of Enviro Notations was published on 28th, November 2018, and the first news was related to an EIA notification. It was about news of Delhi High Court imposing stay on two notifications in which the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change had granted exemption to certain building projects. And I would also like to underline, we never claimed that on 11th March 2020, we were the first newspaper to post that the MOEF and CC brings out draft EIA notification 2020. It happened in spite of the fact that we are a weekly newspaper. Enviro Notations, as a newspaper, always publishes on EIA related news. We have dedicated one full page out of our eight page tabloid size newspaper. Today, I am sharing with you something from the Expert Appraisal Committee, EAC. ESE of the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change for appraisal of industry two sector projects. You must be aware that there are several ESEs. Industry sector has three ESEs, then ESC for coal mining sector, then for non-coal mining sector, for river valley projects, two ESCs for infrastructure projects, one for CRZ projects, and so on. All these ESCs are full of very learned and very experienced personalities. I personally have tremendous respect for the ESCs. In fact, sometimes in future I will share with you in detail how an EAC issued three focus notices to a State Pollution Control Board and uh, uh, it was for wrong interpretation of the State Pollution Control Board and that issued a closer notice to an industry. The industry went from chief minister to chief secretary to the high court concerned and from all pillars to post, but no one could help. But the EAC took up the matter, issued three focus notices and then ordered the SPCB to revoke the closer order. Anyway, let me tell you something from the EAC industry too. Let me call it that way, EAC industry too. It released the minutes of meetings held on 5th and 6th April 2023. There were so many decisions. Some were in favor of the projects, some were not, I mean, some projects were not cleared for the want of some more uh, documents and information. We have covered this in our 12th uh, April 2023 issue. But there were two projects. Both were 160 KLP kiloliter per day of grain based ethanol plant projects located in the same district, Sajanpur of Uttar Pradesh. One is of TQN Retails Private Limited, which includes 160 KLP ethanol. Uh, plant and uh, 5 uh, megawatt cogeneration plant, power plant and uh, the project cost was somewhere around 224.5 crore rupees and the company uh, has uh, submitted plans to allocate 2.25 crore towards corporate environment responsibility, CER. The other one was of YTT Industries Private Limited and that includes again 160 KLPT ethanol plant but here the power plant, the cogeneration plant was 0.5 megawatt less, that is 4.5 megawatt. And the company uh, allocated 3 crore rupees towards the CER. But both the projects have the same EIA consultant, GRC India Private Limited. Now, these days, all the EIA consultants are NABT accredited. NABT is National Accreditation Board for Education and Training, which is a constituent board of Quality Council of India, QCI. And let me tell you that India's most acclaimed industrialist, 
who? Mr. Ratan Tata was the chairman of QCI from 1997 to 1999. Then you must have heard about Dr. R. A. Mashelkar. He was the chairman of QCI from 2001 to 2007. Then Mr. Amita Kant, he was also QCI chairman for a short time in 2014 before he joined Niti Ayo. And I'm just quoting or I've just taken some names which are very famous. So I am making a point that QCI's constituent body is NABT and it's accredited EIA consultant. Coming back to today's issue. Although the ethanol plant capacity is same for both the projects, the power plant generation as well as the land area differs. But the total fresh water requirement, including the CPP, CPP is a capital, uh, captive uh, power plant, declared is 640 KLD, which is stated to be met from groundwater sources. It is pertinent to note that some similarities in other aspects of the two projects are 60 meter stack height, 98 ton per day of CO2 generations, carbon dioxide generation, 108 TPD ton per day of distilled dried grains still is DDGS, it is a byproduct and both are going to have 10 KLD capacity of STPs. Also, there is a common data that 1.85 crore bricks are to be made in a year from boiler ash from both the units. But one unit is set to generate 35.2 TPD and the other one is to generate 35 TPD boiler ass. So there is a gap of how much? 0 0.2 TPD ton per day, which can be a gap of 66 TPD. If we calculate on the basis of 330 days of working. So obviously the question is, what will happen with this 66 TPD of boiler ass? Did the EIA consultant fail to account this figure such a mistake at the end of EIA consultant. Further, TQM with a manpower of 110 and YTT with a manpower of 145, that's a difference of 35. Both units are going to install 10 KLD STPs. Fair enough. Now, TQM will generate 0.48 kg per day of STP sludge and YTT is going to generate 1.09 kg per day of STP sludge. The data is grossly unconvincing. With just 35 additional staff, how can one STP generate more than double sludge quantity as compared to the other? More unconvincing is the use of the STP sludge as valued in Greenland. TQN has an area of 2.142 hectare of green belt and YTT has an area of 2.5 hectare of green belt. The number of plants mandated in both the cases is 2500 per hectare. So if anyone applies simple mathematics, how can it be possible to utilize more than double manure in just 0.35 or 0.36 hectare of land? Hope you got my point. Technically, there is certainly a major flaw. And that's because usually EIA reports are not based on material balancing for such type of points. People probably neglect this area. Having said that, I'm not raising another point, And that is sludge handling as per the Central Pollution Control Board guidelines is not mentioned in the EAC MOM. MOM is the minutes of painting. There is also an issue with the CER fund allocation. As I said, CER is Corporate Environment Responsibility Fund. TQN allots or allocates 
20 lakh rupees towards an awareness program consisting of 10 sessions for farmers to increase soil productivity. Fantastic. Well, it is 30 lakh rupees in case of YTT for the same number of sessions. But there is no basis of calculation shared. It raises the question of whether the effectiveness of the awareness program should be measured by the number of farmers reached rather than just the number of sessions held. Now, it is clear that the quality of EIA reporting has not improved to the level expected after NABT accreditation. Let me say that I have written so many times on EIA report quality or low quality of EIA reports. Anyways, the consultants are all senses like eyes, ears and mouth of the uh, Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Climate Change because on the basis of their reports, EC is granted to a project. In this case, GRC India made a mistake or submitted a very casual or maybe a very flawful report. But the NABT, will the NABT take the onus? It trains these consultants. It certifies after audits and assessments. Don't they see any flaws during the audits and assessments? What action do they take on finding such errors or such complaints? Are they justifying the QCI status and standard? As I said, so many uh, big personalities and big names already involved with the QCI. And after that also, how did it slip from the EC? The chairman of EC is Mr. S. C. Man a fabulously experienced and knowledgeable person. The member secretary of the EAC is a ministry official. There are so many other experts. How can an EIA report or a proposal having so much of simple and impactful errors, simple and impactful errors get through the EAC if it is not deliberately passed? I have already sent an email on this matter to the chairman and member secretary of the EEC and I have requested them for a reassessment or a reappraisal of both the projects. But they have not yet responded to it. It is not a small issue. If the EEC does not act rightly, there are provisions that the matter can further be escalated through judicial interventions. Please share your valuable comments on this video in the comment section and don't forget to hit the like button. It costs nothing to you but encourages us tremendously. And also share this video with your friends and colleagues. And if you have not subscribed so far to this channel, please do it now. You can also share your stories, news, research synopsis, your articles for publication in our print version and share your videos for this YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching this. We will come back with another episode for you. Till then, do take care of yourself and your environment.